Okay, welcome everybody. Today we have uh, Michael Lubash, and as you can read on the screen, he will talk about the diagonalization algorithms for complex and symmetric matrices, which is of course related to our main topic. So whenever you're ready, go ahead, Michael. Yes, um, thanks a lot uh, for having me um, on this seminar. So I'm, I'm, really, I'm really grateful. So I worked on this topic of how to diagonalize um, complex and symmetric matrices a long time ago, and we developed um, diagonalization algorithms um, that are particularly good for dense complex and symmetric matrices and um, particularly interesting for computing the entire spectrum and, and all eigenvectors. Um, and, and I did that a long time ago. Um, so I am trying to get rid of the, um, I'm trying to get to get rid of this um, pause share. Press, uh, press inside the, the window when Keynote that that's the problem. So there you go. Got it. So just try to click on the on the window, main window. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not seeing the mouse. That is the difficulty. Here. No, you can. can you see my screen now? Yep. <clears throat> it moved okay, on. So, um, so it's okay. So I think it should work now. Can you see in here? Can you see see this see see the slides and hear me well? Yes. Yes. Okay. So because I worked on this a long time ago, I don't remember all the details, but it should be it should be fairly straightforward. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure that th this whole topic is is um, is is very straightforward for you, um, being experts um, on these kind of questions, and um, and it's all going to be about numerical algorithms. So, yeah. So I mean, this is important to say. So I'm a I'm I'm currently I'm I'm working as a research scientist for a quantum computing company, um, on totally different on a totally different topic, um, and and if you're interested in quantum computing at all, I just want to highlight um, that we have lots of vacancies at the moment, in all kinds of um, addressing all kinds of questions um, related to quantum computing. So. So there's a big hardware team, um, part of our company that's called Quantinum, working in, in the US, uh, working on the actual device. They are looking for atomic and molecular physicists, um, mainly experimentalists, um, to, to work on, on um, ions, uh, trapped ions, um, and making them um, uh, behave the way they, they want them to behave. And, and here in the UK, um, as well as in Munich and, and in Japan and Tokyo, there's an office as well. Um, there, there are people in our company working on software uh, to run on this device um, and, and make it a useful device. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's, let's start with this talk. Um, so, uh, so, so I will briefly motivate this. Um, this, uh, this topic of um, complex and symmetric matrices um, and, and diagonalization thereof um, using, using these, these examples that we studied uh, many years ago, um, which, which are anharmonic um, oscillators. Um, and and um, for, for, yeah, and, and those are just a few slides, just, um, to, to give specific examples of, of where complex and symmetri symmetric matrices um, can arise. And then I'll focus on our um, algorithm um, uh, that we published um, later on. Okay, so to motivate this topic, um, so the goal of this, this whole project is, is, was quite simple. It was just about finding more accurate and efficient um, algorithms 
to diagonalize uh, complex and symmetric matrices. And in our case, um, we were studying anharmonic oscillators. So to give you an example uh, from this first paper, so this is just a, um, uh, like a, um, an, it's a, it's a harmonic oscillator that, that one can solve, uh, for example, using, um, so it's an anharmonic oscillator that uh, one can solve, for example, using harmonic oscillator eigenstates, right? These, these Hermit polynomials and, um, and, and actually um, in this particular case, um, the, the matrix, I, I believe that one gets out of this should be simply um, real and symmetric. So there's no need here to, to think about complex and symmetric, but, but this paper had this nice um, figure in it. Um, so, so what we were interested in at the time was really these relatively simple anharmonic oscillator potentials like this double well-like potential. And then um, we were studying eigenstates um, and, and dynamics of um, a single particle in, in this potential, um, which, which appears in some, in some quantum dot related um, uh, applications. And, um, and, and um, what, what Andrei Sushikov and, and Ulrich and Shura were doing is they were developing highly accurate large order perturbation theory um, um, analytical results for these kind of problems. And, and for their theoretical mathematical analysis, um, they were simply looking for efficient numerical tools to, to just um, check, you know, and, and um, to just, to just um, compare their results to. <clears throat> and so um, if one studies dynamics and such a, a potential, one is, one is basically, I mean, if one wants to do this, in a numerically exact way, um, uh, using, for example, harmonic oscillator eigenstates, um, one, um, one, one needs to use a large basis um, to describe um, the, 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 um, well, the Hamiltonian um, exactly, because in principle, um, to, to describe it exactly, one, one would need an infinite basis. Um, but, um, but of course, um, uh, one can only approximate that using a classical computer, but one, one wants to approximate this very accurately. So we need to use a large basis and then um, the, the eigen decomposition uh, of the Hamiltonian um, for time evolution, ideally we just want to do uh, a simple diagonalization that computes all eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, right? So, so that's what we were doing here um, to study time evolution in, in such potentials. And to give you examples for um, complex and symmetric matrices arising in this, in this context, um, one, one case that was interesting um, to us uh, was this PT symmetric imaginary cubic anharmonic oscillator. Um, that, that um, has a real spectrum, right? And, um, and if, one, if one expresses that in a, in a harmonic oscillator eigenbasis, uh, one, one simply gets a complex and symmetric matrix. matrix. Um, and the other um, type of problems that we were looking at were these odd unharmonic oscillators um, that have uh, resonances. So, so um, if one thinks about eigenstates, um, they they will have a finite lifetime. So, so basically, what happens here is that um, the eigenstates, uh, the eigenenergies, are complex numbers with an imaginary part, and and uh, and to obtain these uh, complex number eigenvalues, one one trick is to use this complex scaling um, approach. Um, uh, that, that must be very old. And um, what it does is it just replaces um, the spatial coordinate Q by, by Q times um, this, uh, this, this complex number e to the i theta. And, and this theta needs to be chosen um, specifically. So 
it needs to be uh, smaller than a certain value. Um, and, um, and, and this complex scaling <clears throat> also, um, after it's done, and then when this Hamiltonian is expressed in a certain um, basis, for instance, of, of harmonic oscillator eigenfunctions, um, the corresponding matrix is, is complex and, and symmetric. Frida has a question. Frida, maybe you want to ask it? Oh, yes, please. Um, Michael, um, if you solve such a diagonalization problem and you use the wrong basis, which has not the right asymptotics of your problem, couldn't it be that you don't miss the features of your, the solution of your problem? I mean, oh, yeah. you use, for instance, harmonic oscillator functions, but we know now from Carl that you have different asymptotics and different Stokes cones of, uh, of the problem. So if the, uh, your basis doesn't have the right asymptotics, couldn't it be that you don't miss, or that you uh, don't miss the solution of the problem in the whole complex plane? Absolutely, yes, yeah. Uh, that's a, I mean, that's an incredibly important point. It's, it's, um, it's crucial to, to choose a basis um, that, that actually accurately and um, as efficiently as possible um, converges, I mean, so that the solution converges as, as quickly as possible with a number of basis functions, right? So, um, so, so the harmonic oscillator eigenstates um, are just one choice. So um, that, that give rise to these complex and symmetric matrices, but, but it's possible to choose, to choose other, other basis functions, even non-orthogonal ones. So, um, so um, in which case one gets generalized um, eigenvalue problems, right? Um, so that's a very important point, yeah. Um, all right. Um, and, and again, I want to emphasize that um, these things, they look really simple here. Um, I, I am pretty sure for, for most of you. So, so what was done by Ulrich Chura and Andrei Sushikov um, um, uh, in these articles was, was really more complicated. It was about developing large order perturbation theory, um, theoretical approaches, analytical approaches to, to solve these um, problems. Um, using sophisticated um, techniques. Um, so, so my job at the time was just to, to work on this, this numerical algorithm that, that would give us <clears throat> the numerically exact solution to compare the, the perturbation theoretical results to. Okay. Um, so what was our approach? So the setting is, um, we're given a complex and symmetric matrix. And then, um, so, so we know such a matrix is um, diagonalizable only if and only if um, um, there, there is um, an, a, a complex and orthogonal, a complex orthogonal matrix set. So, um, so our goal is then to, to find this set Right, that diagonalizes this matrix A, and and crucially, we we want to use this this indefinite inner product, um, which differs from the the standard um, uh, the standard inner product uh, in in that um, th there is no complex conjugation of either of the two. Right, um, so um, so so. And, and basically what I did at the time was then um, trying to, to see if standard eigen decomposition me methods for Hermitian matrices, um, clearly, clearly um, um, maybe I should mention that um, the difference here to, to Hermitian matrices is um, that this set inverse is, is not complex conjugated, right? So, Hermitian matrices are diagonalized by uh, using unitary matrices. So Z to the minus one would be Z transpose and complex conjugate. But for these complex and symmetric matrices, um, this complex conjugation is, 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 not, is not needed. Um, 
And it turns out that just using this indefinite inner product that also, um, yeah, yeah. Any question? Well, um, it, it, just, um, it just allows us to take algorithms originally developed or, or developed for Hermitian matrices um, and, and rewrite them using this indefinite inner product to diagonalize these complex and symmetric matrices. And, and what we're doing is um, we are diagonalizing this matrix A in two steps, where in the first step, we are three diagonalizing it using these um, generalized householder transformations that are essentially householder transformations, um, but, but using this um, indefinite inner product, um, and um, this, this will give us uh, this, this first similarity transformation acting on A, <clears throat> which transforms A into, into a three-diagonal form. Um, and and uh, it, it's, it's straightforward to see that um, this, this, um, this Q that is, that is coming from, from N minus two householder transformations, um, fulfills this property of being complex orthogonal. And then the second step, um, we, in the second step, we iterate QL factorizations. Um, so more specifically, we use an implicit shift, um, which um, is a guess for the eigenvalue that uh, we're currently trying to find and, and then use a QL factorization. Um, uh, so yeah, exactly. Um, based on Givens rotations, and and this also gives us um, and, and the the, um, the procedure here is um, first we calculate an approximation to the eigenvalue that we're aiming at. Um, this is the sigma. Then we shift um, the the three diagonal matrix in this way. Then we perform a QL factorization, and we do so by um, given using Givens rotations, um, and 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 then all we need to do is we calculate L tilde Q tilde, so just turn the two uh, matrices around. Um, we add the shift to that, and that gives us our T prime, um, which is again um, related to T by a similarity transformation, where Q tilde is again complex orthogonal. Yeah, and it turns out that these Givens rotations. They they um, they can also be designed in, in this way that the the complex orthogonality um, that they are complex and orthogonal right in complete analogy to to how this would be done with with an Hermitian matrix um, where these given givens rotations um, would be uh, unitary yeah um, and that's all we've done so basically we wrote um, this code a long time ago. Um, and, and applied it uh, to, to study these, these kind of problems. And what we included in the code um, was, first of all, these, these kind of, these error messages. So um, one, one, put one, one error that can show up is related to these generalized ho householder transformations um, where we have to divide by the indefinite inner product of two vectors. And, and this indefinite inner product can become zero, um, even, even for non-zero vectors, right? So, um, and, and we, didn't find a, we, we didn't find a cure for this problem. So, so basically the code simply stops um, when that happens, but it didn't happen, um, it actually didn't happen for generic problems. So, um, it's just something that, that one has to keep in mind. Um, then we, we included this multi-precision support. So because we wrote the code from scratch, we could um, put um, a multi-precision library um, behind it so that not only double precision, but quadruple precision and octuple precision um, are easily uh, accessible and open MP parallelization, yeah. <clears throat> and to give you a few examples, 
Okay, so I'm just seeing another question in the chat. Um, please just ask. Uh, okay. Fabio, you want to comment? Oh, a comment, yeah, sure. So not, not now, maybe later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. So just to give you an idea of what we've done with that code and, and what is easy to do with that code. So the multi-position uh, support allows us to, to use um, not only double precision um, arithmetic, but, but also quadruple precision. And, and here you can see comparing this with standard LAPAC, um, which does not have an optimized routine for complex and symmetric matrices. So we are comparing this with the LAPAC routine for um, general uh, non-Hermitian matrix diagonalization, ZGEEVX. Um, those are the red results. Um, so, so our HDEQLS method um, performs slightly better um, even, even with a standard double precision, um, uh, yeah, arithmetic. Um, overall matrix sizes where n is the, the row dimensionality, the row dimension of the matrix. So it's an n times n matrix. And the error is, is so here we're looking um, at the relative um, error of, of some calculation where we can calculate the, where we know the exact result analytically. Uh, so not surprisingly, multi-precision library um, is, is really nice, right? Um, regarding efficiency, what you see here is, um, a runtime comparison between uh, LAPAC, this ZGEEVX that does not make use of the complex symmetry um, uh, divided by, by the runtime of our algorithm. And what we see is that for small system sizes, 200 by 200 up to 700 by 700 matrices, um, our algorithm is always faster up to a factor two or three, the smaller the matrix is. Um, but then um, at least for these banded matrices, um, LAPAC wins at some point, interestingly. Um, so then um, we were- What happened at 400? <laughs> <laughs> what happens at 400? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've got no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so then um, we were to, to understand where to parallelize the code. We, we did some profiling where it spends the most time. And, and we found, interestingly, the most time is spent doing the tree di diagonalization. So not, not in the uh, QL factorization, but in the tree diagonalization. And, and of course, one has limited opportunities to parallelize that. Um, but of course, one has these... Um, uh, matrix vector products and, and they can be parallelized. So, so that's what we focus the, the open MP parallelization on. Um, and, and here you can see um, the wall clock time of the parallel calculation divided by the sequential parallelization, again, for different matrix sizes and different numbers of threads in the open MP um, shared memory parallelization. And one can clearly see um, how the, the parallel speed up is, you know, it goes, it can go up to a factor two, um, nearly up to a factor three um, using 60, 16 threads, right? All right, and that's, that's already it. So, um, so, so I think um, complex and symmetric matrices appear in, in, in very interesting problems. And, and um, back in the days, we were, we were encountering them in, in anharmonic oscillators, um, especially these odd anharmonic oscillators, um, where we try to calculate resonance energies. Um, um, yeah, and, um, and quite interestingly, one can, one can use these methods to, to study dynamics in these, in these open potentials. So, so because these potentials of, of autonomic oscillators, um, they, 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 um, 
well, they they are like uh, um, I mean they go to minus infinity, right? As as one of the if as Q goes to minus infinity, um, one basically has a particle. You know, if one starts a wave packet in in a well, it it tunnels out, um, and so one can study this dynamics and and simulate that um, using these methods. Um, and and yeah, what we've done is 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 very simple. We've just um, written um, improved eigensolvers that that make use of uh, complex symmetry. Uh, and that's it. Um, uh, and with this, I thank you and and wish everyone happy Easter. Thank you very much. It was a short talk. Any questions? Can you explain again this complex symmetry a bit more in detail? Uh, so, so the complex symmetry bit um, related to the the problems that we studied, um, or the complex symmetry bit um, related to the procedure that we used to to solve uh, the. In, in your last sentence, you said you used complex symmetry. I mean. Um, ah. Yeah, so um, you don't um, mean the symmetry of the matrix itself. Yeah, it just means I'm, I'm sorry, this um, is probably not a good way of uh, writing it. Um, what I mean with complex symmetry is just that the matrix contains complex numbers and is symmetric. <laughs> Maybe I should. Maybe a proper term is- yeah, This I, I get, but I, I thought you, you use more symmetry than that. No, <laughs> no, no. Sentence. That's all we use. Gernot has a question. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, maybe a question or comment. So uh, I'm interested in, uh, complex symmetric matrices that are full and that have Gaussian entries. Uh, now I understand that you, you are, uh, you come really from applying them uh, to, to compare to uh, diagonalization of, let's say uh, an harmonic oscillator and there you really need precision to compare with uh, perturbation theory that is subtle. But I mean, I would be interested in much less like in statistical properties of eigenvalues. So, uh, you think I should be careful uh, when I do uh, just a naive uh, computation uh, because the statistics I get uh, may be wrong because uh, uh, st using standard programs uh, gives me problems or? or um... No, 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 that was not our experience. Mm -hmm. So we did use ZGEEVX, which is the standard LAPAC routine uh, for diagonalizing um, generic non-Hermitian matrices, and and that actually um, worked fine. So, I I think um, I think um, I think we we were hoping perhaps for more than a factor of two speed up mm -hmm. um, by making use of this this complex orthogonality. So. Um, it's just, I, I guess, I mean, um, so making use of um, the properties of the matrices of the matrix at hand um, for the diagonalization of it makes a lot of sense. And um, at the time, there was no um, code out there, um, to the best of my knowledge. That, that did that for complex and symmetric matrices. That's why we developed this mm -hmm. code, yeah. Maybe as a common, I mean, as I said, I, I'm coming from random matrices. So, so typically one question that you asked there is the spacing among uh, uh, complex eigenvalues. So, so yeah. uh, in radio distance and it turns out, so, so there's a classification of uh, uh, complex non-hermitian matrices uh, that has been recently revisited. And uh, like for emission random matrices, there seem to be only three different spacing distributions. Oh, yeah. And one of them is known when you have complex non-emission matrices, you can compute it analytically. But in this class, in this complex metric one, um, it is not 
known. So, so we have some approximation to that, uh, and and um, uh, uh, which relates to to this two-dimensional uh, Coulomb gas. Uh, so, so I think it, it, it's very interesting to to well to investigate this kind of matrices. If anybody you know knows something more about joint density or so in this simple model, this would be great. It sounds really interesting, yeah. So I assume that that the Poisson is this analog to 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 the way um, so so where there's a Wigner Dyson distribution yeah. for yeah, there's some some analogy, and of course it's not Poisson. Poisson you would get if you have if you just throw points into the uh, onto the unit disk, uh, and it's different from from that, and it's also different from the standard symmetry class that are called complex uh, Geneva matrices. Uh, Really cool, yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, Gernot, uh, in, in relation to your question, if I may just quickly uh, comment, uh, uh, Michael uh, mentioned that the uh, algorithm stops at some in some cases. So uh, in order in order to use their method to answer your question, you first have to check whether those cases are zero measure or not. Mm -hmm. Yes, happening. indeed. Uh, uh, that, that's not clear. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> It's Thank, you, yes. Thank you. Fabio was next. Yes. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, two questions. Uh, first of all, if I understand correctly, uh, um, you might, you say that you can find all the eigenvalues of the matrices, and this is is this correct? And the second. Yes. Serious question is that uh, if you have any idea of how to extend the procedure to infinite dimensional uh, matrices, I mean to <laughs> infinite to real operators, not just matrices. Uh, no, I have no idea. So I have no experience with um, the second the second um, question. Unfortunately. Okay. So may, maybe I can comment because I just put a paper on the chat and there is, uh, it's not my uh, method, it's uh, somebody else method. And they just don't care about eigenvalues, they just construct out of an operator a differential equation. And this differential equation as a, in a Hilbert space converge uh, the, the solution converge to the eigenvalue to the eigenvector sorry uh, with the highest eigenvalue in modules so this is a way in which you, you you consider a completely different approach and you can extend and what i did is to extend this approach to non-self-adjoint uh, matrices uh, or operators so, so this works uh, or in principle, so also for infinite dimensional operators in a larger situation. But your method maybe is faster than mine. So the, this can be, uh, my method, uh, this method is uh, not very fast actually. And that's why I just work uh, with this paper and then we gave up. But the, the strategy is interesting because it's completely different from what you, explained but okay thank you very much no thank you this is very interesting i, I will have a look at this paper okay. really interesting Uwe. yeah uh, just a little comment maybe it could make sense just to start from a two by two matrix and you will observe that such a complex symmetric matrix of a two by two kind will could also be possible possibly be similar to a Jordan block. It means non-diagonalizable. So that means that, that first could make sense to make a case analysis concerning di diagonalizability or not diagonalizability before starting big numerics and so on. There are papers also by Malibayev, by Alexei Malibayev, uh, concerning uh, these aspects and how to uh, avoid these all these numerical instabilities when approaching such regimes where you're coming close to some hypersurfaces in your parameter space or matrix space where things are getting uh, more complicated. So you have actually 
all your met metric space is, is a stratified space. So you can think about it, for instance, when you are looking on a, a swallowtail parameterization of four times four metrics, and you will see that you have a lot of different kinds of singularities there. And all these things are implicitly hidden also in your model. Yeah. So you should be very much aware of what can happen in your model before starting big numerics and so on, because you will get completely lost in this. It, it, it's a complete channel where you're entering. And it would be good to have some rough guiding ideas before doing numerics, <laughs> because even the high precision and so on, these things are um, not uh, only partially helpful. A trick which could help in this case could be this pseudo-spectral techniques that uh, uh, Peter Siegel was developing and, and David Gretschrek and so on. These could also provide some hint where this uh, pseudo uh, spectrum is starting to blow up that uh, in this case, you are close to some singular behavior. So in this complex symmetric context, you have a huge law of all these kinds of singularities and, and uh, it's, it's only a, a, a very special subclass of your models which will remain generically uh, stable, numerically stable. Otherwise you will always enter some instabilities. So it could make sense to check some of these uh, books and papers on these subjects in order to get a rough idea what can happen in, in order to see how to handle these things correctly, despite these results that you have already obtained. No, no, that's, it, that's just a hint. No, no, it's a it's a very good hint. It's a it's a very good um, comment. Um, I think this is this is probably the reason why. That's not probably. It's exactly the reason. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason why there's no there's no um, general code. Um, for instance, part of LAPAC that does this, right? Maybe, I mean, I have... maybe, maybe. I'm usually I'm coming from the other side when I'm using numerics. I first try to understand it at least roughly analytically, in order to be aware. In as far uh, my numerics might be trustworthy or not trustworthy. Otherwise, you will get a, a lot of nice pictures or horrible pictures. You will see that all your precisions and uh, double precision and even higher precision it, it will break down anyway. And uh, you will wonder what's the reason of this. It could make sense just to look at, at some of these uh, textbooks, not in, in numerics, but just on metrics theory. There are some, a, a lot of good textbooks on, uh, on such ideas and uh, just go through diagonally through these textbooks in order to get a rough idea what may happen then. And, and then to use your codes Yeah, yeah, this makes Otherwise, sense. it will be a big numerical adventure. It's, <laughs> it's warranted for 100% of, of sureness. Okay, it's just, it was a comment. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Anyway. You are sure again. Yes, this time I have a, I have a, just a, a question. Uh, I vaguely remember uh, long ago, I've seen some uh, work by uh, uh, Kulum and Willoughby, uh, since you are coming from uh, numerical uh, analysis. So this is a question about numerical analysis. So Kulum and Willoughby, uh, I think they even have a book or a, a, a two, vo two volume set about extending Lanchos, the Lanchos method, which is good for uh, Hermitian or real symmetric matrices to the non-Hermitian case. Is your method in any way related to, to, to that algorithm for, it's an algorithm for three diagonalization. So instead of getting a Hermitian uh, three diagonal matrix in, in, in their generalized Lanchos method, you, you get a three diagonal matrix, which is not, uh, not Hermitian. So is your uh, method somehow related to that? I think it is very related to that. I mean, we are citing the paper. I mean, we're citing works by Callum and William B. Mm -hmm. And, and this was done before us. Um, yeah, in the 80s, I think, 80s or 90s. Yeah, yeah. Now, now the Langshaw's approach is, is typically used to, to target a few eigenvectors. But, mm -hmm. um, but again, um, I mean, for us, it was about um, having a code to get the entire spectrum, right? 
mm. which is not typically done with lamp shows. So one can do it with lamp shows, but um, it, it's not the most efficient uh, use of, of lamp shows, right? Mm. Um, okay. But it's a good point. I mean, it's important to say um, these, these, these ideas, I mean, the theoretical ideas, they are for the diagonalization of these complex symmetric matrices, they are, they're very old. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was just a matter of um, getting a code that computes all eigenstates and all eigenvalues, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. More comments, questions? Uwe, I think your comment is old, no? Your hand is still up. It's not a new question. <laughs> no, how do you? No, no, it, it's, it's, it's absolutely old, yes. Okay, okay. You can remove it, yes. No, so how do you remove your, your hand from there? Ah, lower, <laughs> lower hand, lower hand. Lower hand. <laughs> yeah, 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 I found it. <laughs> Any more comments, questions? If not, then uh, let's uh, thank Michael again. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thanks everyone for listening and, you know. So is this code in the public domain is it available to oh yes yes it's um um the easiest way to get it is via this computer physics communications paper mm -hmm. yeah okay maybe if somebody is interested then that's where to look okay yeah. okay thank you very much um, have a nice you. easter everybody if you have easter in your country we do <laughs> you, you, you have Easter, really, in Italy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>